Officials and residents of Naraha are aiming to return to the town at an early date, but some say evacuees won't come back if there is a storage facility. Why did the government choose a town where preparations to return are underway? We chose the candidate sites by asking experts to consider various factors such as the distance from places where a massive volume of contaminated soil has been removed because we don't want to transport it over long distances. The experts also considered whether the candidate sites have solid ground or sufficient space for storage. It's true that radiation levels in Naraha are slightly lower than those in Okuma and Futaba, but we do not think that Okuma and Futaba are uninhabitable. We would allow the evacuees to return home if they want to. Some people will be able to come home relatively soon, while others will have to wait longer. The conditions for returning home aren't that different in each town. The government didn't choose candidate sites based only on the current radiation levels. Residents are concerned about the safety of the facilities. How is the government addressing this? A panel of experts established by the government held nine meetings to discuss safety from various perspectives. We are confident that there will be no safety issues. We plan to hold a briefing for residents and give full explanations to ease their concerns. Uh, Mr. Nakazawa, what is the biggest concern for residents of the towns chosen as candidate sites? What worries them most is whether the facilities are really temporary. They think the facilities could end up becoming final disposal sites. Please take a look at this. The government has found no place to build final disposal sites which is why residents are worried that radioactive waste will remain in their hometowns. One respondent of our survey in Okuba gave this answer. No one will agree to host a final disposal site. I think it will be impossible to build such a facility. The government says it will move radioactive waste out of Fukushima within 30 years but no one knows what will happen in the future. I've been reporting in Fukushima and found that people are very attached to their homeland. They want to protect their land, fields and graves they've inherited from their ancestors. Many people told me that even if they cannot return, they want their children or grandchildren to do so. They have mixed feelings about whether to accept storage facilities, which the government says are only temporary. If the facilities become final disposal sites, it's a completely different matter. Well, thank you, Mr. Nakazawa. The government needs to find locations for final disposal sites to make sure that the proposed facilities in Fukushima are temporary. But finding communities willing to help is a very difficult task. NHK obtained a recording of an Environment Ministry briefing on storage facilities held last year. The facilities could turn out to be final disposal sites. Who knows? The most painful thing for me is having to answer questions on final disposal sites. I think we can only proceed with tacit mutual understanding without mentioning the words intermediate or final. The official didn't answer the question clearly. The government proposed intermediate storage facilities five months after the nuclear accident. Then Prime Minister Naoto Kan mentioned the idea during a meeting with Fukushima Governor Yuhei Sato. 
We have no choice but to ask for permission to build intermediate facilities to store radioactive waste in Fukushima. The proposal came out of the blue for the Environment Ministry that thought Fukushima would be the location for final disposal. The Prime Minister's suggestion of intermediate storage was totally unexpected. The Ministry had absolutely no idea about locations for final disposal sites outside Fukushima. Why did the government use the word intermediate? Tetsuro Fukuyama was in charge of handling the aftermath of the nuclear accident under Prime Minister Khan. He says the government had no other choice at the time. People living near the nuclear plant were forced to evacuate and their prospects of returning home weren't good. Under such circumstances, the government could not bring itself to say it wanted Fukushima to be the final disposal site for radioactive waste. In addition, many places in Fukushima were found to have relatively high levels of radiation. Moving and disposing of radioactive materials was becoming an urgent task. So the government proposed building intermediate storage facilities in Fukushima by promising that the waste would be removed in future. We didn't know where to build final disposal sites, but had to deal with contaminated waste and move it somewhere to make progress in allowing evacuees to return home and carry out reconstruction projects. That's why we asked Fukushima to accept intermediate facilities. Government officials began looking for possible sites outside Fukushima Prefecture. They first set their eyes on a town in the southern island of Kyushu. Minami Osumi town is depopulated and struggling financially, so the government secretly asked municipal authorities for help. Residents soon found out about the talks and opposed the plan. We want to help the people of Fukushima rebuild their hometowns, but this is a separate matter. I'm sure the government would not think of bringing the waste to a rural town like ours if the waste really was safe. Negotiations failed. Later, there was a change of government. The candidate's site has yet to be found. It says the facilities to be built in Fukushima are only for temporary storage and promises to dispose of the waste elsewhere within 30 years. But some officials say there may be no need to move all of the waste out of Fukushima, as radiation levels would fall in future. It's physically impossible to take all the waste out. Besides, the radiation levels in the waste may fall below the safety level in 30 years. So, I don't think we need to remove everything. One government official said the radiation level may fall below the safety standard in 30 years' time. Does the government assume some waste will remain permanently in Fukushima? Well, the radiation level will fall over time. Our estimate shows that it will naturally decrease by 60% over 30 years, but that doesn't mean we are allowed to leave radioactive waste in the intermediate storage facilities in Fukushima Prefecture. 
We promise to remove it within 30 years and we will fulfill our commitment. The local people's concerns are understandable, but it's not impossible to move all the waste from decontamination work out of Fukushima. We must tell residents about our project, such as how we choose the sites for the intermediate storage facilities and how we will transport the waste out of Fukushima in future. The cabinet is preparing a law as well. The cabinet has already approved of the project, but we will also enact a law to make clear the government's responsibility. I think that would send out the message that the government is serious. Let me confirm. Will all the waste be moved out of Fukushima within 30 years? Well, that's what we need to study from now, whether we can utilize the waste as a recycled resource if its radiation level falls sufficiently, because most of the waste is soil. Of course, the waste should be moved out of Fukushima if it's still highly radioactive after 30 years. But by that time, we can also anticipate that technology will advance to reduce the volume of waste. Other important challenges include how to dispose of the waste and where, right? Yes. To be honest, it's not easy to find answers to those questions, so we should start by drawing up a timetable of the project, such as how long we should spend on the process before final disposal. One month has passed since the Environment Minister Nobutera Ishihara asked towns to host the facilities, but no meeting with residents has been held. Why? We should first win the understanding of local authorities before holding a meeting with residents. At the moment, we are asking the authorities to allow us to explain our plans to residents. What makes the authorities reluctant? Uh, there are probably different reasons in different communities. I think one of the first things they want to do is to talk to the residents themselves about how to proceed. Is there a rough schedule for the meetings? Not yet. Without intermediate storage facilities, we cannot increase the number of initial storage sites or promote decontamination work. So we are asking local authorities to allow us to hold a briefing as soon as possible. The first batch of waste is due to be taken to an intermediate storage facility in January next year. Is that possible? It's not totally impossible. We're not thinking about starting the work once all the facilities have been built, as some might assume. We are trying to start with something that can be done now, such as transporting small amounts of waste. Well, thank you, Mr. Inouye.